Good evening, good evening everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online Bible study, what we call Spirit of Fire at Home, um, where we just go through the Word of God on different subjects. And so today we are going to get into the Word and I think you're going to enjoy this one. Um, and it's going to be a blessing to you, I believe. I, I pray that it is. So I want you to do this. I want you to go ahead and click your shares. Go ahead and share it with as many people. Invite people to come on board tonight. I'm going to be dealing with the healing power of God, Christ the healer. <clears throat> so even with everything that's been going on, uh, where sickness and disease during a, a time of a pandemic, uh, we want to talk what does the word of God say about divine healing that there is healing available, there is health available to each and every person, and all things are possible to him that believes. And so we're going to go ahead and have a word of prayer. Even while you're praying, while you're um, sharing right now, go ahead, get yourself settled. Go ahead, get your drinks, get your food, whatever you need to while you're sitting there watching the word. But I want you to get your notebooks, your pads, your pens, your devices to now receive and to write down what God is saying to you even as we're ministering. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demo demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my minds to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We, are do, we do approach the holy written word reverently. And so we just thank you for it now. We thank you for those under the sound of my voice that their ears are anointed to hear. Thank you that hearts are open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation. We thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles that shall take place in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you as your word goes forth, it brings healing to every person, Father, under the sound of my voice. We speak healing over family members, we speak healing over every partner and supporter, we speak wholeness, we speak restoration. Father, from healing of old soul ties and wounds to the healing of physical bodies. And so we just thank you for it. From emotional hurts, people are being healed tonight. And so we give you praise and we give you glory for it now. So Father, thank you as, as a skilled surgeon, as a master architect in the word of God. I thank you right now that you guide my tongue, guide my tongue to be uh, skilled in, in depositing the Word of God, explaining the Word of God, imparting the Word of God. And so we give you glory and we give you praise in advance for it. So Father, we just thank you and we bless you and we praise you in advance. We thank you for your healing power, your power that's present to heal now, to set free, to deliver, to make whole. Whatever is wrong is made right. Whatever is rough is made smooth. Whatever is crooked is made straight. So we bless you. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, y'all, we are dealing with Christ the healer. We're talking about the healing power of God. Um, and one of the things in doing so, you know what? I like attacking the devil. I like, I like if he, if he tried to mess with me, I'm going to mess with him. If he tried to come touch my house, touch my family, touch my ministry, touch the people that I'm overseeing, I'm going to come at him with both guns blazing. And so one of the things, um, I, I'm, man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. I don't just give up easy. And so it's one of those things where I walk by faith and not by sight. And as I just begin to look over the word and as, as I begin to just go into the word for my own well-being and, and sowing the word in my heart, I said, I'm going to do this for you all as well. We're going to go through the word together. And we're going to see what God's word says about divine healing because in his word is the medicine that we need to now rectify, transform, and change anything that's happening in our bodies. And so we understand that God's word is powerful. You got to understand the power and the potency of the word of God and of the spirit of God. And so here in 3 John, let's start here. Let's start here in 3 John uh, verse 2. And, and I share this scripture a lot, but um, I, I just want to start here tonight. It says in the New Living Translation, it says it like this, Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. I pray that you're as healthy in your body as you are in your spirit. And so now the, the Amplified Version reads like this, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way 
and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. So God's will is for us to walk in divine health. His, his will is for us to be healthy. Some people still, it, it amazes me, some people are still wrestling with the fact of wondering, is it God's will for them to be healed? But we know that as generations come in and generations die and new, and new people are born into the earth, that we still have to continue to teach the word of God for every generation that God brings into this planet to let them know what God's will is concerning this matter, concerning this subject. And so God wants us healthy as well as prosperous and health is prospering in our physical bodies. So he wants us to be well and the health of your body will determine the quality of your life because your body and I say that once again, the health of your body will determine the quality of your life. And that's one of the key factors um, because your body is the house that you live in, your spirit lives in. And so if your house is dilapidated and torn down, it's hard to get around, it's hard to move, it's hard to get the will of God done. If you're tired all the time, if you're broken down, your body feels like it can't move forward. And so we're going to declare and decree what God's word says about healing. Okay, listen, we're faith people. And the word of God declares that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more words you hear on healing and health, the more your faith grows in that area. And so now as out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will begin to speak and will begin to declare and to decree things. In the book of John 10 and 10 in the Amplified Version, it says like this, the, the thief comes only, John chapter 10, verse 10, in the Amplified Classic, it says the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. And Jesus said it like this, I am come, or I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So I want you to begin to declare that, say, I live life in abundance to the full, till it overflows. I live life in abundance to the full, till it overflows. <clears throat> Jesus also declared that with long life, he satisfies us and shows us his salvation. And so with long life, and so we need to declare that we live long, but also we live strong. We live well in everything that we do. Now that the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38 the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says this, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. So Jesus went about doing good. He was anointed to do this. The anointing, God's ability, the, 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 the unction to function, God's power on physical flesh to now release it into the lives and the bodies of people he came in contact with. And so as the body of Christ, that same anointing that Jesus walks in, we can walk in and we can release. And the same way he ministered healing, we can minister healing. Okay. And so now he says this, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Oppression is strong pressure applied whether it's to your mental faculties, to your physical body, to your relationships, to your finances, is when Satan tries to put pressure on you for things to go wrong in your life, for things to go wrong in your body, for things to go wrong in your mind. And so Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed, healing all, all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I like that. And then it says this, now, Jesus came to give us this life, this Zoe life, this God kind of life, which includes healing and divine health. Jesus said it like this in John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth or makes alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. And then he said this, the words that I speak unto you, they, the words that I speak, are spirit and they are life. So the word of God brings spirit, it brings life, it brings energy, it brings vitality, it brings joy, it brings peace. And so now we gotta hang around this word enough and get immersed in it long enough for it to activate and take 
take root in our spirit to now begin to produce in our physical bodies. The book of Proverbs chapter 4, this is a very important scripture to remember. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. And it says here, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not, what? My words, depart from before your eyes. Keep them, what? My words, in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and watch this, and health. That word health is translated medicine to all their flesh. The word of God is medicine to our flesh. God's word is medicine to our flesh. He says, attend to it. I want you to pay attention to this word. I want you to give attention to it. I want you to hear it, incline your ear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So no word, no faith, no faith. We won't see the supernatural take place because God wants us to be healed. He wants us to be made whole. So now you have to have it preached to you so that faith can come so that you can begin to develop just like a doctor would administer medicine or a nurse or an attending that now we're administering this medicine tonight, this medicine of the word of God that declares that by the stripes of Jesus that you are healed. So now I like that he says, give attention to my word, incline your ear, let them not depart from thy eyes. In other words, keep it before you. It's easy. Um, the scripture talks about in the New Testament that a person, you know, when they, when they get out of the word, it's like a person um, that forgets how they look. They leave a mirror and forget how they look. And so sometimes when we don't constantly give attention to what God's word says, it's easy to get off and forget what God has said. He told us to forget not all his benefits. And so healing is a benefit of you and I being a child of God. It's the children's bread. We are children of God. And so now healing is our rightful inheritance. It's our right. It's our privilege to be healed and to walk in divine health. And now over in Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5, it says like this. It says, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities or weaknesses. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Present tense, we are healed. So I want you to type this. I want you to say this. Say, I am healed healed. I declare that I am healed. Speak to your body and say, body, you are healed in Jesus name and stick with it. It's just like whenever you take a pill that the doctor prescribes is to now combat the symptoms that's going on in your body. So now watch this, but the word of God gets to the root of the matter. And now we declare that we are healed in Jesus name, present tense. He says you are healed, not you're going to be healed, but that you are healed. Say it. Say, I am healed. Close your eyes and say it. Get the image of you walking in healing. Whatever area needs to be corrected, I need you to get the picture of you being healed in that area. I want you to see the thing clearing up. I want you to see the thing growing out. I want you to see the thing falling out, whatever it is. Whatever it is, I want you to see your levels coming, becoming normal. I want you to see your heart beating with the rhythm of life. It's time for signs, wonders, and miracles to take place. God is a miracle worker. His power is always present to heal. His power is always present to create. And I declare even creative miracles that even organs and body parts that have been deformed, I command in Jesus' name that they begin to pop into alignment, that the creative power of God takes place, that he produces new skin, he produces new organs, he produces new eyeballs if need be, he produces new eardrums, whatever is damaged or destroyed, we declare that it is healed in Jesus' name and we invoke the power of the Holy Spirit to manifest his gifts, to even cause those things to take place. The gift of faith, 
the gifts of healings and working of miracles. We declare that this is the time of a divine outpouring of the spirit of God, the spirit of grace, the spirit of healing and wholeness, that people are being healed of scars, not just physical scars, but mental, emotional scars. Whatever needs to be cleaned up, we declare it so now in Jesus name. Why? Because by his stripes, Jesus took stripes on his body so that we wouldn't have to be sick anymore. Jesus, listen, listen, you can be healed of any sickness because the stripes of Jesus took care of every sickness known to man. And so now I don't care what it is. It's time to start exercising your faith. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain. You can speak to that sycamine tree. You can speak to that body. You can speak to your intestines. You can speak to your organs. You can speak to your throat. You can speak to your mind that you have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is formed within you. Glory to God. We come against abnormalities in brain functions now. We declare that brains are healed. We come against, yeah, we come against multiple sclerosis. We come against it now in Jesus' name, and we apply the word of God. We declare that each and every person is healed now in Jesus' name. I need for you to say, by his stripes, I am healed. And watch this. Some of you may say, well, I'm doing well right now. I'm okay. Listen. So now you declare, keep enforcing it. You begin to speak over your body. Every disease, every germ, every virus, every bad bacteria, every infirmity that tries to touch or infiltrate my body dies instantly. We are the healed protecting our health from sickness and disease. So we declare and we decree it now. Some of you, you gotta, I need you to hear this. I need you to receive this. I need you to walk in this. Because now sometimes for some, especially those that have walked, that have heard these messages for years, but it's one thing hearing it is another thing actively applying it to now declare to your body, to declare to a situation that now you really realize how low your faith level is in that area. Because now when the doctor tells you one thing, how quick do you get afraid? That fear tries to rise up. That fear tries to say, now you will be like this for the rest of your life. Don't let the doctor say that it's a chronic illness. That means that you'll never get rid of it. The devil is a liar. And I come against that in Jesus' name. And you need to come against that. That no, I don't care. Whose report will you believe? We apply God's word. We believe God's word. And we come against chronic sicknesses, diseases, and illnesses. And we declare that you are healed, set free, and made whole. Glory be to God. Glory to God. It's time to give them glory. Give them praise. Give them praise. Even in the midst of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, listen, you stick with that word. Sometimes it don't feel like anything happening, but all of a sudden something kicks in. You keep applying. You apply faith pressure on that sickness that's infiltrating your body and you come against it and you treat it like it's an enemy. It does not belong on your physical body. Amen. See, don't see. I see. I know what it's like. You know, part of you can get used to what's been going wrong and then you begin to learn how to live with it. And, and I'm, I'm going to tag some here. It's things like people say, and I know what they mean or what they're trying to say when they make this statement. When people say it's okay to not be okay. No, it's not. God don't teach that. His word don't say that. He wants us whole in every area, spirit, soul, and body. He wants you completely well. He wants your mind well. He wants your body well. He wants your relationships well. And so you got to accept what God's word says, not what everybody else saying. Let God be true and every man a liar. Let God be true. Now watch this. You got to hear this over and over again, over and over again. I recommend, even when you're going to sleep tonight, play this video over and over again, over and over again. Why are you going to sleep? Let this word saturate you because your spirit never sleeps. Let that word play. Put it on your phone by your bed tonight. Let the word of God go into you. Let the, the words of God flowing from this video go into your spirit, flowing through your bloodstream, affecting your physical body. And while you sleep and stuff being corrected, in Jesus' name, in Jesus, I need somebody to believe. I sense, I need somebody to believe this. I need you to believe this. Draw on the power of God. 
Draw on the power. It's already done, saints. And so now say this, say, I believe that I receive my healing now and I am healed. And I thank you, Lord, for healing me. I thank you for delivering me. I thank you for setting me free. I thank you for redeeming me. I am the healed, protecting my health from sickness and disease. Praise God. Woo, glory to God. It's God's will that all men be healed, healthy and strong. First Peter, watch this, First Peter 2.24, looking back at the finished work of Christ, says this, who his own self, First Peter 2.24, says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body. It's amazing. In both of these scriptures, in Isaiah and here in Peter, it's dealing with the sin issue first. It's getting taken care of that first. So that, watch this, because Jesus took care of your sin and took care of my sin, he took care of the penalty and the judgment of that sin. So now we can freely receive all of his promises, which are yes and amen. Watch this, we ain't got to, oh Lord, Ooh, glory to God. Trying to make it right so that you can receive healing. You already right. Receive it. Receive it. And reject those things that try to come to get you off. To, to reject those behaviors that try to get you off so that now you feel as though you don't deserve God's goodness. You don't deserve his mercy. You don't deserve his healing. The devil is a liar for Jesus already healed you. He already took the sickness on his body. He already died for it. So it's already a finished work. Jesus ain't dying again for your sins or your sickness or your healing. It's already done. So now because it's already done, just receive it by faith and begin to thank God for it. Say, I am healed in Jesus name. Amen. And I'm healthy and I'm strong. I declare it in Jesus name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now watch this. I like this. Then he says, who's, I'm, let me finish reading this in 1 Peter 2, 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes, here we go again, ye were healed. Past tense. Ye were healed. If I was healed, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Now this is what you do. You meditate on it. You meditate on it. You pull the nutrients out of that word. By his stripes, I'm healed. Yeah, and then Jesus said, I, listen, Jesus said, I am healed. The Bible says, I am healed. First Peter 2, 24 says, I was healed. I am healed. I receive it. I receive it. I declare I'm healed. I declare I'm healed. Now, don't go and contradict you declaring your healing by saying something negative and contradictory to that. I'm sick. You got to really guard your heart because people will put stuff on you. They'll put you in a premature grave. They'll say, well, you're going to have to live with this the rest of your life. No, 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 no. I don't have to do that. I don't, and it's coming to a point, y'all going to get bold and start telling people, nope, that's a lie from the pit of hell. You'll look the doctor in the face and say, nope, because such confidence, uh-uh, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. That's why I like Christian doctors that believe in divine healing, because they know how to handle the practical stuff and the natural stuff, but they know how to believe God with you. And so, no, God, come on, let's stay together. Let's come into agreement. Let's come into agreement. God heals cancer just like he heals a common cold. By his stripes, you are healed. It is nothing. There is nothing too hard for our God. There is nothing too hard for our God. And glory to God. There is nothing too hard for our God. Glory to God. I give you praise, Lord. I give you glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Whew, I like that. In uh, Psalms, the 103rd Psalm. I don't have much time left with you, but watch this. Tonight, I'm, I'm going to get ready to log off in a second, but I, I want to read this to you. It says here, bless the Lord, um, starting in verse 1. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 6. Glory to God. That's another thing. Let me, let me share this real quick. Let me, let me put a pen, stick a pen here real quick. Be mindful of what you're saying over yourself. Be mindful. Watch the words that come out of your mouth. Set a watch over your words. Like David said, set a watch over my mouth that I don't sin against you, God. So now you don't want to speak negative after you've been speaking positive to now cancel out what you've been saying. Go ahead. Some of you might have been speaking negative. Man, ain't that thing killed me. It, man, I died laughing. Whatever. You know what? This is just running my family. I was expecting to get this. No, you got to change your language. Remember, your vision, your language, and now what's the effort? Applying the word, speaking the word. 
doing things that you need to do physically, whether it's eating properly, exercise, resting well, and all of these things coming together to produce life and health. So now watch this. In Psalm, the 103rd Psalm, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless him. Say, speak well of him. Bless him, soul. Bless God's soul. Bless the Father. Bless the Son. Bless the Holy Spirit. We bless him. We bless the Godhead. We declare right now, yeah, glory to God. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Don't you forget his benefits. Don't forget his benefits. Why? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who heals. He's already forgiven your, um, your sins. Come on now. He's forgiven all your iniquities. He heals. He's healed. He healeth all thy diseases, those things that bring dis-ease on your body. He healeth all your diseases, all your diseases. There is nothing that's been left out. He has healed everything. I don't care how new it is. I don't care how new it's come on the scene. He's already taken care of it before it even came on the scene and was revealed in this earth. You are already the healed, protecting your health from sickness and disease. And Father, we thank you for it. For we function in Romans 8 and 1, I believe, was 8 and 2. For we function in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made us free from the law of sin and death. We've been made free from the law of sin and death. We walk in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We walk in life. We, for those that I hear, for those that are anemic, I call you healed now in Jesus' name. If you're dealing with anemia of any kind, I declare your blood is thickening properly. I declare that whatever needs to happen is happening. I declare that your heart beats with the rhythm of life, that it pumps pure blood throughout your body, promoting life and health. And I declare and decree it. I command iron deficiencies to be reversed in Jesus' name. I declare it. I declare that all is well with you. I declare right now that every vitamin, nutrient, and mineral that you need is supplied to your physical body. I declare in Jesus' name that stress leaves your life right now. I declare that the wisdom of God shows you how to cast your care on him for he cares for you, that you will rest well. I rebuke every demonic force that has come against your life, every attack of the enemy that's trying to disrupt and disturb your peace and rob you of your peace. I declare that peace that passeth all understanding guards your heart and your mind through and by Christ Jesus. Whatever negative curse, whatever negative thing that you set in motion with the words of your mouth, we cut it off. We disrupt it now. I need you to speak it. I need you to speak it. Say in Jesus name, I shut down every negative word that I've set in motion with the words of my mouth. I cancel it now in Jesus name. Amen. So you need to speak that you need to speak that you need to declare that because you don't want now certain things that you've been setting in motion for years by what you've been saying. Uh-uh, we shutting that down now. You have that authority and you have that right. Now watch this. It says, who, um, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I declare my youth is renewed like the eagles. I declare it for you. Your youth is renewed like the eagles in Jesus' name. I like that. I like that. He says, the Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Glory to God. Now in Matthew 8, 16 and 17, it says, when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out, speaking of Jesus, and he cast out the spirits, watch this, with his word. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah or Isaiah, the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. So he took whatever is on your body. Now, Jesus already took it before it ever flared up in your body, Jesus already took it, whether you were born with it or whether it came on your body after birth throughout your life, Jesus already took it in Jesus' name. You gotta declare that. 
Jesus took, listen, whatever body parts you got to speak to, speak to it. Jesus took this. Jesus took this. Jesus took this infirmity. Jesus took this weakness. Jesus took this sickness that's tried to attach itself to my body. Uh-uh. No more. No more. In Jesus, we got to preach it. We got to speak it. We got to speak it more so that faith can be generated in an atmosphere and a culture of faith. Signs, wonders, and miracles can take place. And watch this. Even though you're behind in some things, maybe it's been taking a while for you to get a hold of this word. Don't forget, this is still the year of acceleration, the year of the catch up. So I don't care. Even acceleration in your healing. We declare it now. So, okay, okay, okay. You wish you would have known this years ago. You wish you would have begun to speak differently. Well, start speaking it now in Jesus' name. Spend time with it. Shut the TV off. Get the phone off, whatever. Just, just begin to sit and declare what God's word says. Just like you apply, you know, and you apply whatever medicine that the doctor prescribes, why don't you go ahead and, and, and sow the word three times a day? No side effects. No, the only side, the only effect is going to be healing effect in Jesus' name. So you want to make sure that you begin to declare, that you begin to decree, and that you begin to speak. Now watch this. It says in James 5, 13 through 16. I'm, I'm winding up now. James 5, 13 through 16. It says, is any among you afflicted? Let them pray. Let him pray. Let who pray? Let him pray. Him or her, let them pray. If you're afflicted, if something is coming against you, the first thing it says you pray. Is any married? Let them sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Watch this, that you may be healed. Sometimes things that you've been holding in might be the reason that that healing hasn't been manifesting the way because now he's telling us, get this stuff out, get this stuff out of you. That's you've been holding in and holding it against yourself. Sometimes, listen, confession can be good for the soul, but sometimes it might be bad for the reputation for some of you, but it's, 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 you got to get it out. Find a trusted voice that you can talk to, to get certain things out, deal with things that's been in your heart that you've been holding, you know, whether it's, um, holding bitterness, animosity towards anybody. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I like this. He says, is any among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church. Now you can call for the elders and the elders can come and pray and anoint you with oil. But I like this. It says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Don't you know that you can pray that prayer just like anybody else? The prayer of faith where you release your faith based off of God's word. You now declare and decree what God's word has said about your situation that you declare that by his stripes I'm healed. Jesus was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my, of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. I declare I am healed. And then watch this. What's the corresponding action? Maybe do something you couldn't do before. Maybe begin to just say, just act like you're already healed. Just act like it. Just believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Sometimes people go, go looking to see, let me see if it works. Uh, -huh, just go ahead and receive it. Just go ahead and receive it. Sometimes I, sometimes you feel led by the spirit, go check. But sometimes it's like, uh, -huh. sometimes you're going to see just to see if it did happen. No, it already happened. Remember when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, the very moment he spoke to it, it was dried up at the root. They didn't see it when he said it, but they eventually saw it. So because it went to and attack the root of the matter. So whatever it is, that's the root of what you're going through. When you speak the word over your life, that word is designed to go and to now uproot that thing, the very root of what you're dealing with, and heal you from the inside out in Jesus' name. Now watch this. Now Jesus has already dealt with your sins, and you need to get rid of the guilt and the shame that you've been experiencing with that. Okay? So you did it. Jesus already took care of it. Begin to thank him for forgiving you. Thank him for dying for you, to shed his blood for that sin that you just committed. And now go on and don't allow shame or guilt because shame or guilt will make you a coward to the promises of God. It'll make you, it'll cause you, it'll cause your confidence to be low in it because you'll think you don't deserve it because of what you just did. So no, you speak to yourself. Jesus has already died for the thing that I just did. Now what I do is I set boundaries. I do the things I need to do. I come against and resist those things that have been coming into my life 
But now I'm not, if I messed up, I'm not going to go back and I'm not going to say, okay, now I got to start all over again. No, just pick up from where you left off. Just continue to declare and decree. Jesus has healed me and in his mercy. This is why we say goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. God's goodness and his mercy, his goodness, his unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor that he does things for me I don't deserve and his mercy withholding things from me I do deserve. So God's protective hand is upon you in Jesus name. I need you to receive this. I need you to receive this. I'm preaching better than some of y'all might be shouting right now. I needed to soak into your spirit and now you renew your mind to it. You are the healed. You are already healed and you need to declare your healing. Just like in Joel 3 and 10, it says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the weak say I'm strong. If you're feeling weakness in an area, call it strong in Jesus name. My body is strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I, yes, I invoke the spirit of might to come upon my body, to strengthen me with might in my spirit, by his spirit in my inward man, but also quickening my mortal body and making it alive. So we're here to declare and to decree things. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, what's other things that you shall say? Doubt not, doubt not, doubt not, doubt not in your heart, but believe that the thing that you're saying will come to pass. You'll have what you say. Yeah, faith folk have, yeah, we've heard that scripture for years. For years, but it's time to walk in the fullness of it. Whatever you believe when you speak it, you'll see it. You'll see it. Whatever you believe when you speak it. I believe I'm healed and I speak it now in Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, what happens is that when you meditate on it, it starts to get in you. When you hear it over and over again, it gets in you. When you speak it over and over again, you are now convincing yourself of it. And now all of a sudden, that one time you say it and you declare it, something goes off in you. And you declare, I am healed. Glory to God in Jesus' name. You ain't got to ask God to heal you. Jesus already did it. It's time for you to receive it and stop asking him to heal you of what he's already healed you of. Glory to God. You better hear what I'm telling you. Somebody needed to hear that. Because then you hear this preacher say this, and this one say, God is going to heal you. No, he's all, Jesus has already healed you. Jesus has already healed you. That is one of the biggest things for people to receive and really grasp and get a hold of. It's already done. It's already a finished work. And people pray like it's not finished so many times. They pray like Jesus didn't already do it. Like he got to get up off his throne to now come and to deal with a situation he already died for. He says, I've already done it. You just need to believe what I already did. Do you really believe about the blood of Jesus? Do you really believe how powerful that blood is? Do you really believe my name that's above every name? That's above the name of cancer. That's above the name of diabetes. That's above the name of mental sicknesses and mental health and mental diseases. It's above every name. It's above the name of AIDS. It's above the name of Lou Gehrig's disease. It's above every name. And at the name of Jesus, everything got to bow. In Jesus' name, I ain't getting off of this. Glory to God. I'm, man, I'm telling you, I'm sensing my help coming. The more I'm saying it, glory to God, healing is working in your body. It's working in mine right now. Glory to God. I sense the power of God upon me. Yeah, removing every burden and destroying every yoke. I speak to it. I speak the word of faith to you. Glory to God. And speak it to yourself. The Bible declares in Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who believe. Even God, who quickeneth the dead or makes them alive. And watch this. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. As though they were. Faith doesn't call away what is. It calls the thing that be not as though it were. So say if my, if my arm was broken or something, and somebody came to me and said, man, your arm broken. Me speaking faith is not saying my arm ain't broke. It ain't broke. Uh-uh. But it's saying the thing that be not. So mended arm be not. Healed arm be not. So now that's what I need to speak. By his stripes, this arm is healed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. That's how we speak it. We speak the word of faith. We release this authority. Man, glory to God. I'm telling you, man, God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Yeah, yeah, glory to God. I, I'm, I'm going to read this last one. I'm going to read this last one here. I got this last one. I, I, I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it strong here. Man, glory to God. Some of y'all don't know about you. I'm stirred up. I'm getting stirred up. And I need you to go listen to this. I need you to go hear this. But I need you to go speak it. I need you to speak it. I need you to declare it. In uh, Romans 10, 8 through 10, it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith 
which we preach. And he says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness or right standing with God. And with, watch this. So your heart believes to righteousness. You being in right standing with God that causes you to be able to do this second part. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Not just you getting born again, but you declaring the salvation package. It comes from the Greek word sozo, which means preservation. It means healing. It means wholeness. It means nothing missing, broken or lacking. So now your heart knows that you're in alignment with, with God and that you're a child of God, which means I have all benefits because I'm an heir of God, joint heirs with Jesus, and my mouth confession is making my salvation. Confession is making my deliverance. It's making my healing. It's making my wholeness. I speak the word of God. Man, Holy Ghost, you better teach this thing tonight. Lord Jesus, I'm telling you, you take this and you apply this to your life, you will see things transformed and change. Glory to God. He says this, verse 13 through 15, still here in Romans, and then I'm going to read 17, and that's it. I'm going to close it out. He says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. That word peace, shalom, wholeness. It's all good, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking, and bring glad tidings of good things. So then, verse 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, God called me to preach this to you tonight. See, because the faith has to come. Faith has to come so that we can see manifestation. So I declare, I declare in Jesus' name that everything that's bothering you, I command it to be removed from you. See, now watch this. This is a time for you to exercise your faith to build your muscle. See, this is, see, this is your David in the lion's den. See, th this is where you begin to battle these things because you don't know what God is preparing you for. That he's saying this, utilize, utilize what's attacking your body to exercise my word. God ain't saying I put that on you. No, God ain't put that disease on you to teach you something. But because the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy has attacked you, God wants you to use that as your workout material to develop your faith muscle and then not just succumb to it. No, not just to come to it. I was about to just play a replay tonight because all of a sudden I wasn't feeling well early. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Let me get in the place of my calling. Let me get in the place of my anointing. Let me get this word on healing. Okay, if you're trying to attack my body, I'm going to come at you and I'm going to preach it to God's people. Not only do I walk in health, they all going to walk in health with me. If I listen, every person, no person left behind. I'm like Paul. As I begin to praise, all the prisoners heard it and everyone's bands were loose. Glory to God. Uh, glory to God. Glory. Whoo, Jesus. Glory to God. 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 I am the heal protecting my health from sickness and disease. You are the heal protecting your health from sickness and disease. We are the heal protecting our health from sickness and disease. Boy, man, my name, Mike, man, I approve this message, doggone it. Man, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. And that word will work on you. The work in you. See? Okay. See, the, one of the things sometimes what can happen sometimes, you start feeling better as you're speaking. Then when you let off, that thing tries to come back. Uh-uh. You, you, you keep faith pressure on it. You keep faith pressure on it. And it obliterates it. I declare that this thing is going to obliterate and wipe out sickness and disease out of your physical body through these airwaves. And I want you to send us some testimonies of the healing power of God that's taking place. I declare... I declare that you coming off of every medication that you've been on for years. Now, glory to God. We declare it and decree it. We declare it and decree it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know what? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, y'all, whoo, I'm done for tonight. I delivered what I was supposed to. Glory be to God. I'm going to rest well tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I speak divine health over you, over your children. 
Send this, send this message to somebody that needs it. They need to hear this word on healing. Now, there's a lot more I could teach on it. But right now, this, this is enough to get you started and get things. Listen, this is enough to cause healing to take place in your body. You just listen to this over and over again and take the word, take the scriptures, and you meditate on it and see what the Holy Spirit says to you as you meditating on it. And you write down in your own study time, use it. Use it to get healing and divine health imprinted or engrafted into your soul. It'll come up anytime you need it. Glory to God. Well, y'all, at this time, we're going to honor God in our giving. Um, there's some information coming up on your screen that uh, whatever God tells you to do, do it. We want you to honor him in your tithes and your offerings. Spirit of Fire Nation, we love you guys. We thank you. I want to challenge you to begin to trust God in the area of your money, in the area of your finances. I know sometimes when, when pressure comes on to not release that tithe into the ground and not release that seed that God is telling you to do. But listen, we understand that he promised that he will rebuke the devourer for our sake. He promised that he open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us, that we don't have room enough to receive it. He said, if any man be in Christ, he's Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Listen, he, he promises us not just long life, but abundant life. And so we declare and we put faith pressure on the abundant life of God. And so this year, an acceleration of catching up to be where you need to be. Some of you haven't put money away even for retirement and things of that nature. And you're concerned about that. No, no more concerns. No more fear. That God will give you strategies. He'll give you witty inventions and ideas. He'll give you concepts, multiple streams of income to assist you and to help you live the good life. To end your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. That you are generous towards God and rich towards God. That now you can, God can use you to meet the needs of others because all your needs are met. I declare in Jesus' name that you're out of debt. All needs are met. That you have plenty more to put in store. God gives you design, divine strategy, but he also gives you the energy, the strength, the inward stamina to now stay the course of what you need to do to get from point A to point Z. In Jesus' name, that even the power of God for supernatural turnarounds and miraculous breakthroughs. And with the supernatural turnaround comes supernatural patience, strength, energy, excitement, faith to endure processes and procedures that God may want to take you through. God knows what he's doing. And in the middle of it, he says, yep, you got the lesson. You learned the lesson. Let me wipe the rest of that thing out right now for you. In Jesus' name, God is doing something. He is doing great and mighty things. Let's believe him for the supernatural to take place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you can scan the QR code. There's other ways that you can give. And I'm telling you, the best is still yet to come. Hallelujah. Well, y'all, we declare and decree. The, just like I said, the best is yet to come. Well, we are um, changing a culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. Love you guys so much. God bless you. And see you next time. Peace.